What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're back on the bait laboratory and we're gonna be making some worms using my duo molds. And uh, we're gonna be doing a two color laminate. One side's gonna be purple, one side's gonna be green pumpkin, kind of a watermelon color. One of my favorite colors, I ca I've caught a ton of fish in it with them and I've ran out of those baits and uh, need to make some more and I got a tournament coming up so I figured I'd film it. I've done this color on my channel before but it's a staple color for me so I know that there's been a lot of new people that have tuned in to my content since I've done this video so make sure to stay tuned because I really think you'll like this color and if you make your own plastics this is definitely one you want to have in your back pocket and if you just enjoy bait making videos here's one for you so stay tuned let's make these baits. Right here is an example of the worm that we're going to be using. Obviously right here this is the green side of the worm. And then right here we have the purple side of the worm. As you can see it's got a little bit of purple in the plastisol and then it's got some purple flake in it as well. And then if we flip it back over to the green side we have some purple flake along with black flake. Okay so right here we have our dual injector along with our blending block and I want to show you guys how I have this dual injector set up because I think it's something that's very much overlooked is I have everything pulled up all the way up to the screws on these injectors and then right here on this piece I have it pulled up all the way to the black parts the knobs right here on the plunger part of the dual injector this gives me a nice even flow down and that way you're not having uneven amounts of plastisol come out of either side of the injector everything's going to pull up easily and it's going to go down into your mold and into that blending block correctly as well try that out if you've been having any kind of trouble and if you're new to dual injectors use this and it's going to help you get started okay so we're going to put our plastisol into the microwave we've got two clubs of plastisol right here and i'm going to heat up this one cup of two cups of plastisol and then i'm going to pour them into one cup measuring cups so that way i can uh, just warm up the plastisol all at one time it usually heats up a little bit faster when it's all in one cup like that and what i like to do is start everything off in the beginning and just do one minute uh heat cycles so basically i put this in for one minute i'm going to stir it put it in for another minute and then once it gets closer to being at temperature i'll slow down and go 30 seconds at a time and this usually gets me the clearest plastisol that i can get Okay, so as you can see, we're a lot further along and we're starting to get that clear consistency in our plastisol. And at this point, this is when I'm definitely going to be going 30 seconds at a time to make sure that I don't burn it, to make sure I don't get any discoloration. But that's going to be your best bet is to just take it slow when you're heating up your plastisol because when you go too fast, that's when you end up burning it and discoloring it. Okay, so our plastisol should be pretty close to temp, if not there. So we'll be looking at, we got 350, 352, 3, yep, we're definitely at temp. So what I'm going to do is just keep stirring this a little bit longer, and then I'm going to transfer them into those two one-cup measuring cups, because like I said, this is about two cups of Plastisol. So I'm going to transfer one cup worth of Plastisol into each one of these cups, just like so. And this is these are cold, so it is going to cool that Plastisol down fairly quickly. And I just like to do this because it's quicker to pour, or it's quicker to heat up the plastisol when it's in one cup than when it's in two separate cups. So that's why I'm choosing to do that. Um, I don't know if anybody's got a better way, make sure to comment that, but this works pretty good for me. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. And then get that last little bit out. And then obviously somebody I'm sure is gonna say that I'm wasting some of this this plastisol by doing that, but you can just reuse that clear color. That's not gonna be a problem at all. So here we go, we got these two measuring cups ready to add color into. So the first one that we're gonna do is the purple. And this purple that I'm gonna be using is uh, fairly translucent, which is good, which is what I'm going for, but it's gonna definitely take more colorant than the green's gonna take. So we're gonna just add it in there. We'll go 10 drops. 10 drops there. We'll stir it in, see what it looks like. Actually it looks pretty darn good already. My plastisol is already starting to thicken up, so we're gonna have to heat it up a little bit. But that's actually a pretty good purple already. Now we're gonna get some of the, the green over here. We got the watermelon green X2 colorant. I like this stuff, it goes a long way, a little goes a long way. So we did about five drops there. See where that puts us. 
Had a, got a little bit of stuff on there that I don't want on there. Yeah, my Plastisol started to thicken up, which I knew was going to happen, but um, nothing we can't work through. Down on the bottom where this cup got cold is where a lot of that Plastisol is sitting, but that's not going to be dark enough, so we'll do two more drops. That should be good. I don't want this to be too dark. I want there to be some translucent color to it, and then when I add that, that black flake in later, it's definitely going to darken things up a little bit, but um, not too bad. But we're going to put these back into the microwave and uh, get them heated back up so some of that plastisol that's in there that's solidified can uh, liquid liquefy back up and then we can add our flake. Okay, so now it's time to add some flake into our baits. And I'm just going to double check our worm that we're using as our guide here. And that's got purple with purple flake in it. And then we got green with some black and purple flake as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little measuring spoon right here, take some of the 008 flake, add it on in. And then we'll do that to the green side. There's just a little bit of flake in the green side, so I'm not going to do as much. And then we'll take some of the black flake, add that on in there. And this is only one cup of Plastisol in these measuring cups, so it's not going to take a ton of flake if you're wondering why I'm not putting more, because a little bit's going to go a long way. So I think that I'm going to have enough. And you can always add more, but you can't take it away unless you dilute it. And I don't want to have to do all that today, so we're going to go slow and just kind of see how it goes. But I think I actually nailed my colors like on the first try, which is amazing. It usually doesn't happen that way. But you never really know until I pour these, but they look pretty close for sure. So we'll go over to the purple. Start mixing everything up. But yeah, I'm really kind of, I'm digging this purple. I thought I might have to add some, some color to it, but I don't think I need to. I think this purple is going to do really well on its own. And I like that flake in there. That kind of makes it really like shimmer almost. I don't really know how to explain it, but it does look pretty cool in there. I just hope when they laminate it, it comes together like I'm hoping for, like that other worm is. But when you're doing laminates, you just never know what that final product's gonna really look like until you get them all in there. So hopefully we don't have to adjust our colors and hopefully they just, they look like I'm, like, like they look like I want. So we're gonna heat these up real quick before we do our first, first pour and my molds and my injectors are are pretty cool right now so we're definitely gonna heat these up a little bit hotter than I probably would like to do my laminates typically but they're gonna cool down a lot once they go into those injectors and definitely when they go into that mold so uh, next up pouring our first round of baits and just one thing to note when you're doing your laminates I like to add like this B, the letter B right here to show the bottom of my mold. So that way I know that the bottom color, in this case the purple, needs to be on this side of my blending block. The green's gonna be on the other side. So that way I don't mess up my colors and have the have them have them upside down. So that's just a little tip that, that I do that you guys can take and um, do to your own molds. All right, so it's time to take our cups out. And I'm going to arrange these in the right direction so my purple is on the right side. And I'm going to get everything set up. Just so. Okay. So here we go. Wish me luck on the first pour. Everything's going to get nice and cold real fast. And what I'm using today, guys, is the El Gaisano mold from Duet Molds. They are three cavity molds. So we will see if I got them all to fill up. I'm not sure if I did or not, but I think we were successful. I can definitely tell the injectors didn't clog or anything like that. So we might have uh, gotten lucky on our first try here. And so far, the colors seem to be decent. So we'll check those out here in a minute once everything kind of solidifies. So check back in a second. Okay, so I think our Plastisol is cooled down enough to take them out of the mold and we're going to see where we're at in comparison to the originals. I can already tell you that I know that they didn't match up exactly, but I still think this color is going to be decent. We're going to have to just see how decent it is. Um, it's 
hard to see the laminate in this lighting because everything is very translucent. So I'm gonna need to add color in it. It definitely laminated really well. I can see it myself, but the colors are not thick enough compared to what we're using. Let's see if I can get some better light for you guys. But as you can see right there, you can definitely see that purple and the green in there. And then these ones are so translucent that it's a lot harder to see it, but it looks like it's coming through on camera, hopefully. But these are actually pretty cool worms still, though. I might leave it. I like that a lot. Okay, so here's our six inch version. And if I didn't mention already, guys, this is the El Gaisano worm from Dual Molds. It's the El Gaisano mold. And then here's our six inch version right here. And uh, this is a really cool color. Um, there's just something about it. Maybe it's the how translucent it is, but that color still kind of pops a little bit. I don't know how well it's coming through with this lighting right here, but in person, it's got a really cool look to it. All right, so off camera, I added a bunch of brown, a translucent brown into my pigments here, my Plastisol, because the purple was a lot more vibrant than I was going for. So I added some brown in there. I think it's a little bit closer to what I want. So we will see here in a second. There's nothing wrong with that last color. It's actually really, really cool. If this would've been the first time I was making them, I probably would've just went with that and done it, especially for like a clear water color. Um, it definitely turned out really, really cool. Um, but since I'm going to a tournament here pretty soon, I definitely wanted to have the color as close to the same as possible. Um, so we'll see what we end up coming up with this time. Um, I wish I had the recipe for it. I, I typed everything out onto a Google Doc a long time ago, and um, I looked for it tonight, but it just I couldn't find it. I might have deleted it. I'm not exactly sure, but I definitely don't have it for reference. Okay, so let's check out round number two to see if we got closer to our color that we're going for. Take the molds over here. Open up the four inch. And check everything out yeah that's a lot closer to what I'm going for it doled down that purple kind of brought out the green a little bit yeah that definitely got closer to what I'm going for so I think these are gonna work definitely got a good laminate this El Gaisano mold laminates really really well so if you're looking for a cool four and a half to six inch worm mold this is a great one but yeah these turned out really really good we're gonna pour up a bunch of these all right so we got one more run that we're going to do on camera here got to get my blending block set up and i really think that tip i gave you about labeling your molds for which side is the top which side is the bottom i think it'll definitely help you guys out um it's something that i didn't used to do and occasionally i would mess up and have my colors on the wrong side so i think that if you guys do that for your own molds it's definitely going to help you out it's going to save you some uh messed up pores so try that, see if it helps you guys out. But um, yeah, I think these worms turned out really cool. They're definitely what I was going for. Just took a little, little massaging to get the colors right. Okay, so I think it's time to take these out of the mold. One other tip for you guys when you're using your dual injectors is to inject slowly. I, my last round, I did it too fast and I had some air bubbles in my worms. And um, this time I ended up going slower. And as you can see, no air bubbles, but that's a better view of that worm, the green on that side with the purple laminate right there. You guys got to try these out for yourself, but these are, these are a great looking worm. Check out the four inch ones now. I don't know if I mixed up enough Plastisol, but I might have to do that tomorrow, make some more of them. But yeah, these worms are turning out really good, exactly what I was going for. There's all of our six inch El Gaisano worms right there. And then we are gonna end up with those four inch ones right there. Great green pumpkin, watermelon, purple color. I love this laminate, it looks really, really good. Super happy with it. And uh, I think these are gonna catch some fish. And I know that if you make some for yourself, they're definitely gonna catch some fish too. The El Gaisano worm is a great worm. Comes in a six inch mold and a four and a half inch mold. Great drop shot worm, great shaky head mold. Definitely gonna catch some fish. Really like the way this color turned out as well. 
And uh, before we go, make sure to hit that subscribe button and also got links to a playlist of all kinds of tackle making stuff and then another video that YouTube thinks that you guys will like. So make sure to click on one of those and I will see you guys next time. See ya!